doing bad to you if you remain calm it means by doing that you are, are creating a safe space for open communication again if you remain calm when you are communicating with someone with mental health problems it means you are avoiding assumptions you are avoiding assumptions that is to say you are preventing making assumptions or jumping to conclusions you cannot jump into conclusions by remaining calm when you are talking to somebody who has mental problems remain just remain calm it means you are avoiding assumptions you are preventing making assumptions or jumping to conclusions again if you remain, I mean, you remain calm when you are communicating with somebody who has mental problems it means it encourages self expression it encourages self expression that means uh, it allows individuals to share thoughts and feelings at their own page or pace and the remaining calm supports emotional regulation it supports emotion regulation it helps individuals manage emotions and they respond fortifully it also creates a sense of control if you remain calm it means you are controlling yourself it brings a sense of control so that is to say empowers individuals to share information when they're ready when you are ready that's when you respond but if you remain quiet when you are communicating with somebody with mental problem by remaining quiet it means you are allowing yourself to observe a lot of things and you will respond later i don't know if there is any question do you have any question any question remember silence is not a lack of engagement when you are silent it doesn't mean you are lacking i mean it's a sign it's a yes oh it's a sign of engagement a lack of engagement silence is not a lack of engagement again silence is not disinterest it means you're not interested and again silence does not is not avoidance is not avoidance so silence can be powerful ally in communication that is allowing individuals to feel heard validated and supported finally for today let us have a look at respecting the dignity and the dignity and autonomy of individuals with mental problems respecting the dignity and autonomy or independence of individuals with mental health problems respecting such kind of people especially their dignity is crucial more especially when you're communicating with them it's very crucial especially when you're communicating with them there are some rules or principles or guidelines which you are supposed to follow as i earlier on said what kind of approach are you supposed to include when you were respecting their dignity at the same time their independence the first one is person centered approach person centered approach you put a person who has a problem mental problem issues in the center that is to say you focus on the individual's unique experiences and needs first of all when you're communicating with them when you want to dignify them put them to be in the center put them to be in the center 
By doing that, it means you are focusing their uniqueness. It doesn't matter. Even if they seem to be lunatic, but since they are in the image of God, you need to dignify them. Each and every human being is supposed to be dignified. Dignify them. They are in the image of God. Despite the fact that they are lunatic or they are mad or they are having mental disabilities, dignify them. Put them or focus on their uniqueness and unique experience more especially and even their needs. So it's the person-centered approach. Follow that one. The second one is empathy and compassion. Show understanding and kindness. You need to show you understand them better than we are And therefore, be kind to them. Be kind to them. And again, you need to stick to non-judgmental attitude. Have this kind of attitude. Non-judgmental. Don't be judgmental. Don't judge them. Uh -uh. All what they need is your support. Maybe it's your support. But don't judge them. Don't advise them as well. Uh -uh. All they need is your support. Respect boundaries. You need to respect boundaries. That is maintain appropriate physical and emotional space. If you're giving boundaries, it means you're creating space. Create a space in between them and you. Respect that. You should also be an active listener. Listen actively to them when you're communicating with them. Engage fully and respond thoughtfully. There must be clear communication. There must be clear communication. Use simple and understandable language. Use simple and understandable language. Please, as much as you can, try to do that. Autonomy and choice support decision making and self advocacy. So by promoting respect and dignity, I did mention that you are supposed to dignify them. So by doing that, it's good because you are establishing trust. You are establishing trust that a person who is having some challenges mentally, the moment you engage them, you show them that you do care. It means you are establishing trust. You are establishing trust at the same time, you are promoting empowerment and self-advocacy. You are also promoting self-esteem and confidence in him or her. You are also promoting a sense of safety and security. And finally, uh, support recovery or providing support and recovery and well-being to such kind of a person. So... Remember, respecting dignity and autonomy in, is essential or is important for effective communication and supportive relationships with individuals with mental health problems. I think having reached here for today, let us stop there because even your faces are telling me you are exhausted. You are not in a class. You've gone outside the class. Thank you very much for listening.